the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, State Minister of Finance Ranjit Siamalapitiya announced that Sri Lanka has issued regulations extending the time given for exporters to surrender dollars from one month and seven days to 100 days. Love Gas PLC announces that the company will also revise domestic LP gas prices for this month following the decision of Litrograss last weekend. The Colombo Stock Exchange ends its 12-day losing streak, with the market session concluding on a positive note as gains are observed. And New Zealand is set to nearly triple the entry fees for international tourists. The move has sparked significant criticism from the country's crucial tourism sector. From Studio 24, here's Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. State Minister for Finance Ranjit Siambalapitiya announced that Sri Lanka has issued regulations extending the time given for exporters to surrender dollars from one month and seven days to 100 days. This extension applies to the period allowed for converting dollars that have already been brought into the country. Exporters had complained that they faced difficulties in matching the payments and costs for inputs due to the short surrender time. Exporters who receive advance payments in particular had complained earlier that they were badly hit by the rule. As a result, smaller exporters had stopped the practice of getting advance payments as they make losses if there's changes in value after converting dollars and paying for inputs. While surrender rules that require dollar sales by exporters to banks hinders the flexibility of exporters to manage exchange rate risk, they do not do harm to the exchange rate as reserve money is not inflated by such transactions. Sri Lanka imposed a series of exchange controls including shorter surrender rules after the end of the civil war as macroeconomists printed large volumes of money to aggressively enforce a centrally planned policy rate to boost growth off of flexible inflation targeting. A surrender rule to directly sell dollars to the central bank take dollars out of forex markets and create new money rupees regardless of whether the exchange rate is already under pressure from previous printing. Love's Gas PLC announced that the company will also not revise domestic LP gas prices for the month of September. This was communicated by the Group Chief Executive Officer of Love Gas PLC, Dr. Niroshan J. Pires today. Accordingly, the current price of a 12.5 kg Love Gas cylinder is at 3,680 rupees, while the 5 kg Love Gas cylinder is 1,477 rupees. Meanwhile, on last Sunday, Litro Gas Chairman Mudita Piris said that the company has decided not to revise the prices of its domestic LP gas cylinders for the month of September. Litro Gas announced that four consecutive price reductions thus far this year, and the price of a 12.5 kg cylinder remains at 2,892 rupees, and the 5 kg remains at 1,198 rupees. Last month, the Litro Gas company decided to keep the prices of LP gas cylinders unchanged, citing the company's decision not to revise the prices despite the price hike in the global market. The highly beneficial free visa on arrival move appears to have hit a bureaucratic barrier yesterday, causing concern and confusion within the travel industry who charged some officials were resorting to terrorism instead of promoting tourism. At a meeting chaired by the Secretary to the President, Sama Nikanaika, yesterday, the implementation of the revised visa policy, which was expected to benefit 38 countries, hit a stumbling block due to bureaucratic disagreements and legal ambiguities. This meeting, which included officials from various key agencies, such as the Foreign Ministry, the Tourism Ministry, Public Security Ministry, Attorney General's Department, Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, Sri Lanka Tourism Promotions Bureau, Department of Immigration and Immigration, SLT Mobitel, failed to reach consensus over the immediate implementation of the single shop visa policy approved by the Cabinet of Ministers on Monday. The Department of Immigration and Immigration Controller General Harsha Ilukpitiya reportedly have expressed reluctance to comply, citing unresolved issues and potential conflicts with existing regulations. This resistance created confusion among industry stakeholders, whilst other departments, including the SLTDA, SLT Mobitel, had shown willingness to proceed. A central bank official has said that Sri Lanka needs to maintain prudent macroeconomic policies to tackle the economic fallout from a possible widening of the Red Sea conflict. 
The widening Red Sea conflict, implications for the global economy and Sri Lanka was discussed at a forum organized by the Institute of National Security Studies, which is a think tank. The discussion held at the Ministry of Defense explored how increased maritime risks, potential diversions in trade routes and economic instabilities can affect Sri Lanka as an island nation, according to a government statement. Director of the Economic Research Department at the Central Bank, Sujita Jagajeevan, pointed out that maintaining prudent macroeconomic policies was important to tackle the economic fallout on Sri Lanka from a possible widening of the Red Sea conflict. The discussion focused on the evolving geopolitical landscape of the Red Sea, implications of the conflict on the global economy, impacts on the Sri Lankan economy and strategies to strengthen economic resilience whilst exploiting the opportunities as a key maritime hub in the Indian Ocean. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nike Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The Colombo Stock Exchange finally broke its consecutive losing streak today as the market session closed with gains, putting an end to a prolonged 12-day downturn. Both indices ended the day in green, signaling a positive shift in the market sentiment and an offering a much-needed boost to investor confidence. To get the summary of today's market performance, we connect Tarosha Ashokar from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. So today, the All Share Price Index surged by over 150 basis points, closing positively at 10,837, marking its first gain in three weeks. Accordingly, the S&P SL20 Index also saw a significant uptick, gaining 55 points to end the day at 3,045. Investor sentiment has shifted towards optimism, moving past the cautious approach observed in recent weeks. Banking counters, particularly Commercial and Sampath Bank, experienced active buying as investors engaged in bargain hunting following recent price declines where the overall banking sectors experienced positive momentum today. Despite the overall positive market performance, retail participation fell to 8,800, down from yesterday's level of 12,000. However, market turnover surged to 1.5 billion, rupees driven by driven primarily by high net worth and institutional investors through off board transaction moving on top gainers for the day blue diamonds scmb finance voting and asia capital plc while top losers for the day are orion finance union chemicals lanka and kotmale holdings What were the outcomes of today's weekly Treasury bill auction and what impact would it make towards the secondary market? Nitin Fernando is standing by from First Capital Holdings to give us the insights. The secondary market experienced a mixed sentiment during the day on the back of heavy trades with active investor participation with most of the maturities across the yield curve enticing trades during the day. 2026 maturities traded between 11% to 11.2%. 2028 maturities traded between 12.85 to 13.05%. 2029 maturities traded between 13.05 to 13.2%. Meanwhile, the central bank held its 152 billion weekly T bill auction today, whilst maturity yields increased during the day. 91-day maturities was accepted at a weighted average yield rate of 9.61%, increasing by 12 basis points. 182-day maturity was accepted at a weighted average yield rate of 9.94%, increasing by 10 basis points. Whilst 364-day maturity was accepted at a weighted average yield rate of 10.03%, increasing by 2 basis points. Thank you. Today, gold prices fell to their lowest level in two weeks, driven by significant sell-off in equities that led to a surge in margin calls. This increased demand for liquidity pulled additional pressure on bullion prices, especially as investors positioned themselves ahead of the highly anticipated non-farm payrolls data scheduled for later this week. Spot gold, which reflects the current market value of the metal, decreased by 0.8%. 
to $2,473.50 per ounce, marking its lowest price since August 22nd. Concurrently, U.S. gold futures, which are contracts to buy gold at a future date, fell by 0.7% to $2,505.40. This phenomenon is often observed when investors are forced to sell assets, including gold, to meet marginal calls related to their equity investments. As a result, gold, typically seen as a safe haven asset, faces selling pressure as market participants scramble to cover their positions amid broader financial market volatility. Oil prices have dropped to their lowest levels of the year following news that a dispute affecting Libya's oil output might soon be resolved. Today morning, Brent crude fell to $73.33, a 5.2% decrease from yesterday, while West Texas Intermediate dropped 5.8% to $69.84. The decline follows a statement from Libya's legislative bodies on Tuesday, announcing an agreement to appoint a new central bank within 30 days. Recent weeks had seen Libya's oil production significantly reduce due to conflict between rival political factions over control of the central bank and oil reserves. Just 591,000 barrels of oil per day were being produced in Libya as of late August, against July's daily average of 1.28 million. The Sri Lankan rupee remains steady against the U.S. dollar at commercial banks in Sri Lanka today compared to yesterday. According to the commercial bank, the buying rate has reduced from 293 rupees and 44 cents to 293 rupees and 20 cents, while the selling rate has also dropped from 303 rupees and 25 cents to 303. Next, let's take a look at the exchange rates against other major currencies. A short commercial break now. Corporate updates right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Sri Lanka's Haley's Fenton's Limited had secured contracts to develop a minimum of 91 megawatts of ground-mounted solar power plants across the country. These projects will be situated at various grid substations and will range from 3 to 5 megawatts in capacity. Haley's Electronics has secured contracts for 15 megawatts of small solar plants, comprising three 5 megawatt plants. Energy Next Private Limited has been awarded two megawatt plants and one three megawatts plant. Global Consumer Brands Private Limited and Next Gen Asia Private Limited have each won contracts for five megawatts. These awards were approved by the cabinet following competitive tenders for the construction of 165 megawatts of solar plants, with individual capacities ranging from one to five megawatts. The cabinet's post tender statement noted that the deals were finalized after detailed negotiations but did not disclose the specific prices of the power purchase agreements. While it is typically expected that smaller solar plants might incur higher costs due to a lack of economies of scale compared to larger plants, the competitive environment in Sri Lanka has led to lower prices than those established under previous feed-in tariffs. <laughs> LTL Holdings Limited announced plans to launch an initial public offering and be listed on the Colombo Stock Exchange, marking the largest IPO to take place on the CSE. With a special event yesterday morning, the company formally announced that the IPO opens on the 10th of September and applications for the subscription of shares are now being accepted. The IPO is an offer for subscription of up to 1.3 billion new ordinary voting shares at an issue price of 14 rupees and 50 cents per share we are an initial issue of 16 billion rupees with the green shoe option to increase the total to 20 billion rupees through the IPO, offering a stake up to 22.3% of LTL to the public. Out of the IPO proceeds, 13.5 billion rupees will be utilized as a part of the finance equity investments, 
towards the construction of a 350 megawatt combined cycle power plant in Kerala Pitiya which would be the second power plant in operating on LNG in Sri Lanka and 6 billion rupees will be allocated towards investing in a 50% equity stake in the 100 megawatt Siamalando solar power project with 894 megawatts of existing power generation capacity in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and Nepal and over 450 megawatt in secured pipeline projects LTL is on track to become the first independent power producer in Sri Lanka to have an installed capacity of over 1000 megawatts positioning the company as the largest listed IPP on the Colombo Stock Exchange. The company's future pipeline includes power generation projects, expansion of manufacturing facilities in overseas markets and exploration of upstream opportunities in the LNG infrastructure. The company's CEO Mr. Numan Marika stated that the projects they plan to fund through these public offerings are not only timely but they have been a part of their long-term vision. We were planning for an IPO because we were planning to have these investments on the those two projects uh, we were targeting. Those projects are timely required. They are required to be connected to the national grid of this 350 megawatt commercial cycle power plant on time. And the Rividhanavi uh, solar power plant also has to come because that will uh, require to meet our 70% uh, uh, renewable energy targets. And uh, these uh, projects were on pipeline. They were scheduled projects. And we were targeting for this. Kapraka Holdings PLC is delighted to announce the appointment of Dr. Chamar Bandara as an independent director on its board. With over two decades of experience in financial management, corporate strategy and business consulting, Dr. Bandara's expertise will be instrumental in advancing Kapraka's innovative partner central project. Dr. Bandara brings a wealth of knowledge in financial restructuring and strategic planning, which will be pivotal in steering partner central towards success. He is a senior chartered accountant with more than 20 years of experience holding a PhD in business and management and an MBA. As the founder of Corporate Doctors Private Limited and SCB Corporate, Dr. Bandara has a distinguished record in leadership roles in accounting and business strategy in Sri Lanka. Partner Central marks a significant shift in Kapraka's business model, moving from traditional inventory to a dynamic on-demand stock approach. Ordinary voting shares of Sri Lanka's multi-finance PLC have been officially delisted from the Colombo Stock Exchange as of today, marking the end of the company's public trading process. This delisting follows a strategic merger last month in which LB Finance, after initially acquiring a 64% stake in multi-finance in 2022, fully absorbed the candy-based licensed finance company. Fairway Holdings, which had been the largest shareholder of Multifinance since 2017 after acquiring it from the N-Trust Group, recognized its position as part of this consolidation. The merger and subsequent delisting reflect LB Finance's broader strategy to expand its footprint in financial services sector, effectively integrating Multifinance's operations into its own. Hutch Sri Lanka is dedicated to ensuring that users can navigate the online world securely. Understanding the unique challenges faced by younger internet users, Hutch Sri Lanka has introduced Hutch Junior Internet Guard, an innovative solution designed to create a safer online environment for children. For the first time in Sri Lanka, a telecom operator offers an effective way to help parents protect, track and understand their child's time spent online. These specialized packages provide a variety of options to suit different needs with a total of eight packages available. Hutch Junior Internet Guard includes features such as content filters, limited browsing hours and parental control options, ensuring that your child can explore the internet safely and responsibly. Let's take a short break now. Global updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Global stocks tumbled today after Wall Street had its worst day since early last month, with heavyweight Nevada falling 9.5%, leading to a global decline in chip related stocks. Japan's benchmark Nikkei closed down today, leading to losses in Asia. 
electronics and semiconductor company Tokyo Electron slumped. South Korea's Kospi was down 3.2%, with tech giant Samsung Electronics dropping 3.5%. Australia's S&P ASX 200 was down 1.9% and added today data showing the country's GDP grew by 1% compared to the second quarter of 2023, slightly above experts' forecast. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index declined 1.1% and the Shanghai Composite Index shed 0.7%. U.S. stocks experienced a decline as investors awaited crucial data that could impact the Federal Reserve's decision on interest rates adjustments. Meanwhile, the prominent Magnificent Seven technology giants, which have driven much of this year's market rally, also saw a dip in their share prices. U.S. stocks slumped on Tuesday to kick off one of the market's historically worst months. The Dow dropped 1.5%. The S&P 500 fell more than 2 percent, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq plummeted 3 and a quarter percent. Market sentiment fell as Institute for Supply Management data on Tuesday showed U.S. manufacturing remained subdued despite a modest improvement in August. The central bank will also be looking closely at Friday's non-farm payrolls data for August. Odds of a 25 basis point interest rate cut by the Fed later this month are more than 60 percent, the CME Group's FedWatch tool showed. Investors see a less than 40 percent chance of a 50 basis point cut. The so-called Magnificent Seven megacap technology stocks, which have led this year's rally, plunged on Tuesday. Shares of NVIDIA dropped 9.5 percent as investors softened their optimism about AI. After the close, Bloomberg News reported that NVIDIA received a subpoena from the U.S. Department of Justice as the regulator seeks evidence that the AI heavyweight violated antitrust laws. Tesla fell more than 1.5 percent after Reuters reported that the electric vehicle maker plans to produce a six-seat variant of its Model Y car in China from late 2025. Outside of big tech, Boeing dropped more than 7 percent after Wells Fargo downgraded the plane maker's shares to underweight from equal weight. New Zealand is set to nearly triple the entry fees for international tourists, a move that has sparked significant criticism from the country's crucial tourism sector. Industry leaders are concerned that the substantial increase in the levy could deter visitors, potentially impacting one of New Zealand's most vital economic drivers. Visiting New Zealand just got more expensive. The government announced Tuesday it will nearly triple entry fees for tourists to $100 New Zealand dollars or $62.20 US. Authorities argued it would ensure visitors contributed to public services and high quality experiences while visiting the country. Matt Ducey is the New Zealand Minister for Tourism and Hospitality. The move hasn't gone down well with the holiday sector. New Zealand's Tourism Industry Association fears the fee will put visitors off while it recovers from the hit it took during the pandemic. An original 35 New Zealand dollar fee was introduced in July 2019, but hasn't proven enough to cover costs associated with so many visitors. New Zealand has struggled with the impact of tourists on the natural environment and with infrastructure stretched by the large numbers. The government said the new fee was competitive and it was confident the country would remain an attractive destination. Sorry. Official data released earlier Tuesday showed travel export receipts for the year ended June 30th were around $9 billion US. That's down 5% from before the pandemic. Data also showed visitor numbers are roughly 80% of levels before the pandemic border closures. With that, we mark the end of today's bulletin. We'll see you again tomorrow with latest happenings across the business world. Until then, I am Sanyamudan Nayaka. Thank you for watching and have a good night.